And welcome to PM Agenda. I'm Ashley Gillen. It's been 10 years since the nation voted down a republic, but what's the mood now? Recent polls suggest a majority of Australians do want to make the change, but we're still divided over how to do it and when. And even though both the Prime Minister and opposition leader are Republicans, they don't seem keen to pursue the issue right now. Once a Republican, always a Republican. These questions are a matter of time and due process. I think in, a, in many ways Australia is a republic already. There is less passion for a republic now than what there was 10 or 15 years ago. He was the Prime Minister who broke this nation's heart. Do you think everyone's hearts are still broken? Look, I'm not going to respond to that. So far they've come up with nothing that works as well as what we've already got. Pick this issue up, take it forward, show leadership. Today we're going to examine the pros and cons of becoming a republic and how the debate has evolved over the past decade. Joining me here in Sydney we have the Greens leader, Senator Bob Brown. Hello. Hello, Ashley. And Thomas Flynn, the Executive Director of Australians for Constitutional Monarchy. Hello. Good afternoon, Ashley. In Melbourne joining us today, the Liberal frontbencher Tony Abbott. Good afternoon to you. And in Canberra we have Major General Mike Keating, the Chair of the Australian Republican Movement. Mike Keating, let's start with you. Do you think Australians are ready for another vote on this issue when there doesn't seem to be any sort of consensus about how to go about the change? Actually, I think we are. It's, uh, it's ten long years uh, since the last referendum. Uh, things have changed from then. There are whole new generations of Australians. Uh, this is our issue, Ashley. This is our issue. It's an Australian issue. It's not something that we have to refer to uh, people in another country. As soon as we can harness the national will uh, to get together in a joint, uh, multi-partisan way, uh, we can give the Australian people a chance to be informed and to uh, discuss and to uh, eventually vote on what they want. Somewhere between 60 and 73 per cent of uh, people want an Australian Republic. Well, Thomas Flynn, we just heard that those results and, and there was, of course, a poll commissioned by the Australian Republican movement today showing us that there is a majority of Australians that want to move in this direction. Do you accept that that is the general sentiment and do you think it's inevitable? No, I certainly don't accept that it's the general sentiment. I haven't seen the particulars of the poll or the uh, questions that were asked. But uh, I, I think it's very striking that, that, uh, that the number I always remember is 45%. News poll uh, regularly ran uh, every year for a very long time, in, in January each year, a poll on uh, the general question, do you want an Australian Republic? Uh, the last time this ran was in January 2007. It hasn't been published since, but when it was uh, published in January 2007, it was down to 45%. Now, you don't, you need uh, figures in the mid-60s at least at the beginning of a referendum campaign if you're going to have a hope of succeeding and otherwise if you if uh, they don't seriously think they've got a hope of succeeding they shouldn't bring forward bring forward what is it after all a very expensive process well Tony Abbott John Howard's often blamed for manipulating the vote back in 1999 there's uh, claims that by adding on the preamble and the wording of the question the choice of the model that it was doomed for failure what do you make of, of that well, I think that's quite wrong, and I think that's just an after-the-event rationalisation by Republicans of why they failed. Uh, John Howard uh, gave the Republican movement exactly what it wanted, uh, and it turned out that whatever the Australian people might from time to time tell pollsters, in their hearts, they didn't really want to make the change, they didn't really like the model, and they were rather keen on our system of government, a system of government which has worked very well uh, for more than a century under the Crown and I think can continue to work under the Crown. Bob Brown, what do you make of that idea that John Howard gave Republicans what they wanted <laughs> and, and what's your plan he for how we should... He gave very clever... He gave the country, not just Republicans, a mishmash of the uh, three different components that you were just uh, citing. Uh, that's why I've um, introduced a bill to the Senate, uh, uh, but it, it, echoing the findings of the Senate committee looking at uh, the question of the Republic, that we should have a simple yes-no. Do people want a Republic? Australians can vote on that. 
and then we can look at uh, the models and, and um, put to the people a um, series of models or a series of questions to determine if they vote yes for the Republican, uh, all the polls show they will, uh, to fine tune the options for Australians to vote for the type of republic. I also disagree with former Prime Minister Howard about the passion not being there. Australians do want an Australian as head of state and uh, it's just uh, waiting for the leadership to come from Canberra where both the leaders are in favour of the republic and I heard uh, just yesterday that all state leaders are also in favour of a republic. We just need the leadership from Kevin Rudd to put it to uh, the election next year as, um, as, a refer as a plebiscite question to the people of Australia. But even if that did happen at the election next year, what you're proposing sounds like still quite a lengthy process of coming yes, up with the models. It would require at least two referenda or plebiscites and, and that's why it should be held with the election next year because that, that's uh, much cheaper. Um, Kevin Rudd's keeping the option of holding a discreet plebiscite between elections. That would cost an extra 70 or 80 million dollars and uh, if the two questions are put with elections you save 150 million dollars it's a very inexpen inexpensive way of giving Australians both their vote uh, for the government of the day but also on this inevitable uh, change to a republic that Australia is heading toward.